I'm going to talk to you uh, about data validation. So it's going to be it's going to be a little bit of a game, um, and hopefully we're going to have some fun. But let's uh, let's have a look. Um, but first of all, why do we want to? Why this talk? This talk is because um, although we have all different backgrounds, um, my background is a um, my background is as Java developer. So when I was at school, no one taught me about functional programming, right? At university, they taught me about objects, how objects communicate together. So when I started writing in Scala, it was, it was weird. I couldn't understand why people were so excited about functional programming. And because I'm not a mathematician, for me, all those words were just jibba jabba really. I couldn't understand any of those. Um, and this is um, a talk that is meant for all those people like me when I started in Scala, they still don't understand all those words. But hopefully what I'm gonna sh demonstrate to you is that even if you don't understand all those fancy words, you can still get the point and get an intuition of why this stuff is actually pretty cool. So, my promise, I'm not gonna use any functional fancy word, right? Yeah? <laughs> okay, so why are we gonna talk about data validation? Well, the reason why uh, I decided to talk to you about data validation is because a problem that everyone has to solve, right? As soon as your application accept some data, there is a really good chance that you will have to validate it. And you have two types of validations. You have what I call the technical validation, like is this an int, is this a tuple, uh, is this a valid email, and then you have business validation. And the business validation is the one that changes a lot and that can get really complex. It needs to be maintained. And if we don't structure it properly, it can be a real mess. So it's something that everyone has to do, right? There's no escape. So why every time do we try to reinvent the wheel again and again and again and again? Wouldn't it be better to use something out there that someone else already spent their time on, that has probably tested and just works? So um, what we are gonna do today is we're gonna start with a really, really simple case study we're gonna, through, we're gonna go through different solutions, and every time we're gonna ask ourselves, is this solution good enough? Can we improve it? So I'm gonna need your help here, right? So, good time, I hope you guys got some good coffee. But just so that maybe people are not familiar with Scala, let's review the key actors of our game. I promise it's gonna be quick. So. This slide had lots of colors, um, but I had to remove it. Um, so the slides are not gonna be as fancy, <laughs> but they are gonna be readable. Uh, and you will get the, thank you guys. <laughs> I'll post online the colorful version so the code will look nice and fancy. So map, is everyone aware what map is? Yeah? Cool. Um, it's just the idea of you have a wrapper that gives you some information, and in this wrapper you have some type. So for example, you could have an option that might or might not contain a string. And map is that function that allows you to access that object inside this container. What happens if you actually have a value, so you have a sum, Daniela, and you map over it, and you add a yo at the beginning of the string, you will get a new value that is still an option with the values changed. What happens if you map over something that is empty? Eh, nothing happens really, just uh, you get back none again. Flat map. Flat map is the combination of map and flatten. Um, so basically it's exactly the same, but um, if inside your map you are dealing with an option, 
what you would get is an option of an option of something. So it is something that maybe, maybe exists. That's terrible, it doesn't make any sense, right? We just wanna see something that maybe exists. So you just call flatten and it will flatten your type. Last actor in place is what happens if we have both a map and a flat map? Basically we can write some magic syntactic sugar that allows you to concatenate things together. So in the first example, we do the first sum of one, A becomes one, then we do sum of A, B becomes five, and then we keep those two values and we sum them together. The result is a sum. But what happens, in, what happens if one of the two values is, doesn't exist, is none? The whole thing will return none. So this is, should be fairly easy and basic for everyone. Is everyone with me so far? Yeah? Cool, because this is gonna be super important. So, validation. We're gonna do an amazing case study. Um, so we're gonna imagine we have a form with two fields. The first field is an email, the second one is a phone number, and we submit this form, and we need to make sure that the data makes sense. By the way, this is exercise that we are gonna do is not valid just for this example. In general, when you're learning a new language, it's a great idea to try to represent your problem in a really simple way and try to um, analyze how each solution could be improved. Um, so, going back to our case study, let's use Scala 2.11. Uh, we know it's not the latest version, but hey, uh, we'll get there. Uh, so, stay with me. We just started Scala. With Scala, we don't really know much, but we are ex-Java developers, so we know options, right? So, we, we, we like options, right? So, let's review really quickly what an option is in Scala. Um, it's just something that has some of a type or a none. And the important thing is that we have a map and a flat map. What this means is that we can use that constructor that concatenates all the operations together. So in this code, uh, we have a case class that is called data uh, that has a field that is an email and a phone number, they're both strings. Then we have some functions, we don't really care what they actually do, they are called validate email that gets a string and returns an option of a string, validate phone that does the same but with a phone, and then we have this function that is validate data that just combines all together. So, what's wrong with this code? Why this code doesn't work? Yes. Yes, that is one of the problems we will see later. Um, but the idea is that um, this is an example of how we use the function, right? So if we call validate data with two things that are okay, obviously we get something meaningful. We get some of a case class. But what happens is one or the two are bad or both of them are bad. We get back none. What does this tell us? Nothing. Is exactly the same as saying is valid true, is not valid false, right? So we don't know what's, what really went wrong. So this is not really validation, it's just yes, no, right? We want to be more expressive than that. We have a really powerful language and we want to fully use it, right? So don't use options, right? Uh, if you, all you need is, uh, is yes or no, just say yes or no, don't, don't, just don't, please. Um, so what we want to do here, actually, is that we want to tell exactly our um, consumer of our function, of our API, exactly what went wrong, right? We would just don't wanna simply say, yes, it's good, no, it's bad. 
So we go around a little bit and we discovered another type in Scala. Scala 2.11. That is called either, right? Okay. This could kind of make sense. So either is gonna work. So I'm gonna return a valid value. Or it's not gonna work, right? So I'm gonna return whatever. I'm gonna just say that it's a problem. Um, but either in Scala 2.11 doesn't have a map, it doesn't have a flat map. So we cannot write that for comprehension loop. What we have instead is we have something a little bit weird, but it kind of works. Uh, it's called left projection and right projection. The idea is that you, you basically have to tell which side you want to map on. You basically say which one is the right side. Sorry, bad wording. Which one is the correct side? Um, and then, of course, then you have a map and you have a flat map and you can write things. Um, but you have to choose the right projection. So we don't want to do that and uh, we go ahead and try to deal with it without any map or flat map. Um, so we try to rewrite the code again. We have a case class um, with some data, uh, email and phone, some function validate email that takes an email and returns a either where the left side is a list of string and the right side is a string, and the same for phone. By the way, note it's a list because obviously there could be multiple things wrong with a specific field. Um, and then we, the only thing that really we can do with either in Scala 2.11 is pattern matching. Um, so yeah, we basically do and we say, okay, if they're both right, we build the right. If they are both left, we build the left with the combination of the two lists. Otherwise, this is, this is just boring, right? Um, this code is not nice. Um, the reason why it's not nice um, is because if we have two fields to validate, it will kind of work for combination we can deal with it. What if you have three? What if you have four? What if you have five, right? You, you will probably, your head will explode and we will all quit and go back to Java, right? Um, this function works though, right? Um, if, we, if we use it, um, you see that um, it just works. It will list you all the things that went wrong. Um, the problem, though, is that still um, it's not clear which one is the right, the, the correct side. Um, so if you just look at the signature of the function uh, of validate email, it's not really clear what is the correct value, what is not the right value, what is not the wrong value. Um, obviously, English helps us a little bit, so you can say that the right Value is the right, meaning is the correct one, and the left one is wrong. Uh, but I live in Britain, and I've been trying to convince them that they drive on the wrong side of the road, but um, it's, not, it's not always uh, that obvious. Um, so it kind of works, uh, but the problem is that the code is extremely difficult to maintain, and it will not scale the more field you add, the more validations you add. Uh, and also, there must be an agreement between developers um, on which is the right side, correct side, and the wrong side of things. Uh, and obviously, hmm, of course, we can find an agreement, but we would like the compiler to tell us which one is the right one, which one is the wrong one. Um, so, um, things have changed in Scala uh, 2.12. Um, so, now that we know that things are different, uh, all our colleagues push us to upgrade to Scala 2.12, and awesome, now everything is gonna be amazing. 
So let's review uh, what is changed uh, with uh, Scala 2.12. Basically, what happens now is that we do have a map and a flat map, right? Nothing else has changed. Uh, we still have either a left value or a right value. But instead of having us to tell the compiler which projection we want to use to map and flat map, it's just assumed that the right projection is the one that we are going to use by default. So, good, right? Let, let's try again. So, we have a case class uh, with a map. Uh, sorry, we have a case class that is called data with two fields, em and fall. Uh, and we have two functions, validate email, that takes an email and returns an either with a, either a list of errors or the value, same with phone. And then we have this function, validate data, that is built with that fancy for comprehension loop. Um, what's wrong with this code? We kind of already had a spoiler there. Yes, the answer is fails fast. So let's try to use it, and we will see that if you pass two values that are okay, it works. If you pass two values that are both wrong, it will just get the first one. Because we are chaining all these eithers, right? So the first one will fail, and it will not computer, compute the other ones, right? The whole thing will fail. We'll not even look at those. So what does it mean, this, in reality, right? Because at the end of the day, our job is fairly practical. So imagine you will have this really fancy form, right? Um, and you have three values. And you enter some values that are bad values, but you don't know they are bad values, right? And you submit your form. And the form, the, the form returns, okay, the first field, field A is wrong. Okay, then I'm gonna change it and submit it again. And then it's gonna say, ah, now is the second field that is wrong. But come on, dude, why didn't you tell me that? Okay, I'm gonna do it anyway. Okay, I'm gonna change it, submit it again. And again, it tells, oh, now is the third one that is wrong, right? So this will really, really upset uh, the users that are using our website. Why our functions should be different, right? What we really want is that given an input, we immediately want to know that what everything that is wrong because we want to take action, right? We don't want to submit over and over again and every time find a different problem, right? It, it's true for websites. I don't see why it shouldn't be true for functions. Um, so the problem with either 212, just to summarize, is that it fails too fast, meaning that it will just validate until everything is right, and as soon as it finds one validation that is not correct, it will stop and not compute the other ones. So either in 2.12 is great, only if you don't need to accumulate errors. If you only have to validate date, one thing is fine. But if you need to validate more, then obviously you need something different. So, we have seen that the Scala language provides some tools, but obviously it doesn't really fit our problem, does it? Um, so let's have a look around what's out there. And we discovered this amazing library that has an amazing name, Cats. Um, believe it or not, the author of this library is not into cats at all. Uh, it's just that Cats stands for category. Uh, um, but we are not gonna use any fancy language, so let's move on from that. So, cats, why should we use cats? So the first reason for cats is that um, we have seen that either in 2.11 is pretty limited. All you, have, you, all you can do with it without choosing a projection is just basically pattern matching. 
with cat09, um, you can just add that import and magically your either will be exactly the same at Scala to 12. Be aware, this is not an excuse. Migrate to Scala to 12, please, right? Who is not using Scala to 12? <laughs> Come on, guys, right? Um, but if you're familiar with cats, um, now basically either works exactly the same as another type that was called XOR, that was in cats till um, 0 0.8, but now obviously it's basically almost the same, so there's no point in having this type. Um, but what's the other um, reason why we might want to use um, cats? And the reason is this type. Okay, so this type is called validated. It comes from cat, so it's in package cats.data and uh, it's called validated and has two possible um, implementations that is either valid of a value or invalid. This is simplified signature, but it's still good enough for us to understand what's going on. Um, kind of makes sense. The name is kind of promising. It's clear what is valid and what is not. So valid will be valid and invalid will invalid, right? So that problem seems to be gone. And we have a map. So it's easy to manipulate a value that is valid. So far, so good. We don't have a flop map, though. So basically, what it means is that we cannot write the full comprehension loop. So we cannot chain things together. In a way, that's cool, right? Because we don't want to do that. We, we have seen that we want to prevent people to do that. We don't have flap map, but we have something else that is extremely useful. I'm not gonna go too much into details because otherwise I'm gonna break my amazing promise. Um, but the idea is that um, validated has an apply. This apply basically allows you to compute all the operation rather than in sequence in parallel. Um, it has a weird syntax. I saw this weird symbol with the thingy here and the at. Um, but it kind of works, right? It's exactly what we want. Uh, instead of chaining all the operations again, it will run all the operation um, in parallel and then return all the results as a tuple. So what we can do is then we can take, take that tuple and apply a function on it. Okay, a little bit of fancy words. If you guys are um, brave enough, I put you a link there. You click there and you will understand everything. Um, but let's go back to our case study. Okay, now we know what validated is. Uh, let's try to rewrite things. Uh, again, same as before, we have a case class that is called data that has two fields, email and phone. We have a function, validate email, that takes an email and return a validated that has either a list of strings or a string, same for phone. And now in our function validate data, we cannot write the full comprehension anymore because we don't have a flat map. We are forced to write all the operation in one line. How cool is that? Right? Right? <laughs> so basically, what we are saying is that all the operation are um, run in parallel and then all the results will be collected and if they are all valid, we are gonna map over it. Um, does this function work? Yes, it works, right? Uh, so if you pass two values that are okay, uh, it will return a valid of a case class that contain those two values. If you pass something uh, with two values that are bad, um, you will get an invalid instance with a list that contains all the values. 
um, but can we do better than this? Can anyone has a, some, see, can see something that doesn't like? Yeah. We have a winner. Okay, so this is a really good solution. Uh, but now we really want to go into the details of our types. Does it make sense to have an instance of invalid that doesn't tell me anything? Right? No, it doesn't, right? If it's invalid, you must tell me what's wrong. Um, and guess what? They already thought about it. Uh, it's called validated null, where null is stands for not empty list. Um, so probably um, a better use of this was to use, instead of using uh, validated, we could use a validated nil. This will guarantee that when we get an invalid instance, um, we will just get um, at least one error. Um, another thing that we could improve, I'm running out of time, so I'm gonna tell you all the answers. Uh, <laughs> um, Another, um, another thing that we could improve, instead of just returning a string, return a representation of an error that is a little bit more structured. Um, you could imagine that you want to do something with these errors, right? You might want to pattern match, or you might want to have uh, a human description of what went wrong, right? Um, so for example, you could have a case class uh, called error with an error code and a message that is meant for humans. And then you could have a list of all the um, errors that you can get. So summing up everything, this is our uh, final solution, um, where you basically, instead of using validated, we use validate nil and the error is not just a string, but it's something a little bit more, right? It's, it's a case class, it could be whatever you want, really. But the idea is that it's not just a string. Um, and again, uh, it works well. This slide would have been so much better with colors, but hey, we'll deal with it. Um, so it's a little bit more verbose, but it's fine. Um, we still have some information. So for example, you could have an error that is a case class that contains the code invalid email format and the message saying invalid email format because an email must have whatever. Um, so, so far what we have seen, we've just discussed about types, right? Choosing the right type for the problem that you're trying to solve. Um, okay, but Thank you. How do I structure all of this in my application, right? So far, we just looked at something fairly simple, um, even I would say a simplistic case study. How do you apply this in our application? Um, so I'm going to give you some tips uh, that work really well for us, uh, that allow us to uh, build a validation layer that it's easy to compose, easy to maintain. Uh, so the step one, is to decide how your error should look, right? So uh, choose a structure and everyone, every error that your application produces should follow that structure. The reason why this is important is because we need to accumulate errors. If errors are different, the problem of accumulating things that are different is much harder than accumulating things that are the same. Um, the second tip that I want to give you is to make it simple, right? So use a type alias. So once you decide that your error representation is whatever, create an alias so that people will be forced to use that error type. And the third step, as Marcus was saying, we work with people with different backgrounds in our team. Not everyone can be comfortable with symbols. I have to admit it took me a while to get used to the, I don't even know how to call it really, the, the thingy with the, with the at. 
Um, so don't be scared of creating your, your own DSL. Create a companion object, and instead of that crazy symbol, uh, call it whatever. If your team is good with functional programming, they're all good with Scala, go for the symbol, really. Um, know your team and make it simple for your team because everyone will have to use it. So if it's difficult to use, they're not gonna use it. So this is a simplified example of what we did at work. Um, so you have a, we have a trait that is error uh, that has a code, a message, and a value that is just a sequence. And then we have different implementations of this trait. Um, for example, we have a bad request uh, that doesn't get any, that by default has values set to um, empty sequence. And then we have not found uh, that has, takes a code, a message, and a value. And what we have done, there is something quite cool, is that is the list of our errors that define the status code of our response. So if we have a list that contains at least one bad request, we will return 400. If we have only not found, then we will return 404. This is just one example of things that you can do if your error type is not just a string. The third tip that I gave you was to create a companion object. I work with people in my team that have a background in Python, that have a background in Rails, they don't like symbols. Uh, so what we have done is just, we have defined this companion object that is called validation, that has a function that is called success, that builds uh, validation and failure. Um, nothing crazy, right? Um, and because again, we don't like symbols, we just, created a function that is called accumulate, that is just an alias uh, for the symbol itself. So, to sum up, do not reinvent the wheel, right? If you realize that you have a problem, look around. There is a really good solution that someone already spent some time and created an abstraction for it. Try to choose your types properly, choosing the type does solve half of the battle. And also be aware of your team, right? So make it simple for people to use whatever you pick. Because it's the only way to enforce some, um, uh, some defaults within the team. So, what's the best way of learning things is actually to go and try and run the code. Uh, so if you guys are interested in knowing more, um, that's the link of where you can find all the code that I show you to you today. Um, my suggestion is just to download it, try to run it, change it a little bit, and play with it. And if you guys are interested, uh, have a look at my Twitter handle. That's where I'm gonna post the colorful slides of this representation. Uh, and uh, that's it, that's everything for me. Thank you very much.